welcome back to Keeping It Real. Uh, we have with us Patrick Egan. Patrick is also known as the Sultan of Store. What a great name, Patrick. How did you get that name, the, the Sultan of Store? Well, that is a good one. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the funny thing was is I, there, there's a gentleman that deals with cold storage in the city as well, and he's mm -hmm. the king of cool. And I thought, king what cool. a great idea. Everybody knows who he is. Everybody knows what he does. Right. I just figured, you know, it's not, it's, I guess it's apropos to nickname yourself, but, uh, you know. Well, yeah, why there you not? Go. Why not? What the hell? I, <laughs> I, I called myself the mortgage mensch. There so, you go. But not everybody knows what a mensch is, but uh, at least those who do guy. thought. But it was, there you go. So, there so you, go. You, you know your stuff. Yep. And apparently you know your uh, your self storage uh, business as well. You've been in this you've been in the self storage it's, business it's specializing in this for a number of years yeah, now. Yeah, uh, coming on about 7 years now. The uh, a, a group out of the US, uh, one of the larger private owners in Canada, a company called uh, Storage Mart. Mm -hmm. The president came up and wanted somebody who can kind of, you know, teach the business and be a, a feet on the street to find locations. And literally over the next two years, he spent uh, driving the car, driving in the car with me, going from city to city, from town to town, uh, you know, teaching me about what we called the scent. And the scent oh, is, okay. uh, you know, certain criteria were had to be met. And when they did, you know, this is a spot. So we got to the point where we could, this is a great spot for self storage. And so that's kind of was was the training. And 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 beyond that. Uh, you know, found opportunities, valued them through using uh, using trailing expenses and occupancies and unit mixes and all of the things that go into a self storage facility. All the technical, all, all the, the technical, technical stuff. details, right? So you know, taught taught me that as well, Soup Danette. So he was mm -hmm. my mentor, and uh, and then basically took it from there and moved forward. Right. Okay. So so that's in order to find a location that you could convert into a uh, storage yeah. mark well there's kind of, there, yeah there's there in 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 this particular case uh you know there's three types of of, of acquisitions you can mm -hmm. have a greenfield which is a brand new development uh you know find the property get the proper proper zoning for it plan out the facility how big does it need to be for that particular community then there's the conversions taking an existing maybe underutilized industrial building uh building it out uh putting the partitions and the and the uh the, um, the storage units within mm -hmm. the facility, and uh, and then of course buying an existing facility, right, right, and 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 that's a really interesting aspect of that right now is because the existing facilities are the bell of the real estate ball right now. Oh, and why is that? Well, what's happened is I guess with the uh, uh, kind of the tumultuousness in the in the investment market and the equities and securities, etc. Um, there is kind of a movement towards real estate towards mm -hmm. commercial real estate right. you're ta hearing about real estate investment trusts or REITs mm -hmm. um, basically large institutional money omers and hoops and, and all these kind of, these groups are basically coming in and saying well we we want to get a, a a good return a better return than we, we can get from the bank okay. and in 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 this particular case the self storage business is a year in year out performer so very reliable returns. Well, so now, what what's happened in the self storage business that's made it like suddenly well, become you attractive? Well, know what's interesting or? is is I think that people used to build these facilities because they're waiting for something to happen on their property. Well, we're just going to use this for now because it's the time being. And then they realize that they need two or three people to operate it on a on a given basis. It, we, it went from being mom and pop, so basically just. Uh, cinder blocks with roll-up doors mm -hmm. and you know maybe set a bit off the road maybe in the back but then people started realizing this is actually a retail game right okay. so the thing is is that now people are looking for 150 lineal feet of frontage on a 20,000 to 40,000 car count street mm -hmm. in a one three or five mile de demographic that holds about 600,000 people and this is becoming a real retail game so basically industrial zoning Mm -hmm. But with that retail traffic is kind of the perfect self-storage location. So what's happened though is as a result of building these buildings, these smaller facilities are hypothetically getting drained. Like people are moving out into these, these nicer buildings. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is a university educated uh, 25 to 35 year old person is, typically, is your typical customer, wants to feel comfortable walking in at 11 o'clock at night. They mm -hmm. basically want to, you know, they've gone shopping, they're on their way home to drop the, you know, pick up the kids, drop the kids off, et cetera. And they're passing this facility every day. On, okay. uh, on their daily routine, and that's when they decide to turn in and, and do that. And so, you know, you combine the turn in and, and turn in to become a customer. 
to okay, turn into right. becoming okay. Okay, because know, they have the retail aspect. You've got this retail. It's safe, so yes. they're not afraid to go there at night. Yeah. And I guess what nobody has space anymore for. Well, their you stuff. know, with the intensification of the populations right. in downtown Toronto, of course, you know, our our community. Obviously, this is happening across uh, across North America. But with all the condominiumization, you've got these 500 and 900 square foot units. Right. People are running out of places to put their stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, actually, you know, an interesting one that we're working on, this is a fascinating deal. You know, it, it, one thing is, is actually finding these types of properties is, is just as hard, right? In, in terms of like, if you want to find an existing tenanted facility to buy that as an investment, that's hard. But to find an empty building in downtown Toronto is really tough. And, right. um, and one deal that we're working on right now is, um, is, is on Jarvis. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, a, it's, an old, uh, it's an old building that had an old use and basically going to the city and saying, hey, can we get this in here? And we had to convince the city yeah. that this particular uh, space was, um, was appropriate for storage and, and, a, and a benefit to the community. Right, and so people Did do they need buy to it? store. The, well, still we're still working. On we're still working on it. Okay. We're Good still luck. working on it. Yeah. Good luck. So, yeah. yeah. Well, if there's a need for it, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, why not? Right. Absolutely. Why not? People need to put their stuff somewhere. P absolutely. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. it makes sense. So, what kind of an investment opportunity is there for people? Well, basically, um, you know, there's the there's the REITs. So there's self storage REITs. There's self storage mm -hmm. equities that are uh, available on the market. Um, as it relates to the individual investor, you know, there's a certain amount of, uh, I guess, a size that they can swallow. So, so for example, uh, banks are going anywhere from a you know a fifteen percent to a. I guess forty percent down payment or loan loan to value. I okay, suppose. so so you need to have um, between fifteen percent and forty percent down to purchase. To purchase, right? And then okay. yeah, and then on top of that, the uh, the banks are financing based on no more than eighty five percent occupancy. So what happens is, you know, let's say your 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 facility is performing at ninety or ninety five percent, mm -hmm. and eighty five percent occupancy is kind of where the bank's going to stop because they are being cautious, they are being careful. They do go and do uh, intense analysis of the area to find out what are the what's your competition, um, what are the rates that the other places are charging, mm -hmm. and so in order when they go to do the appraisal that the valuation is good for the bank. So the banks are lending on this product. Okay. There are groups out there that that are doing that type of activity, but um, it, it is a, a you know very cautious uh, approach. So what are you looking for? Are you looking for investors who want to purchase these, or I'm looking for you're looking for potential space that you can turn into or convert uh, or exist uh, existing yeah, facilities so an that, existing facility that maybe is is not being well run or the people are not maximizing it and they want to get out yes or raw land so and and you will have the uh, you will have the buyers potentially yes uh, okay so if real estate agents are watching this and they think they know of a place that could be good they should contact you. absolutely Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and all, and even if they, if if they say, well, I've got a customer who wants to get into this business, and we need to value, uh, figure out um, if a particular property will support this. I can do that analysis. I can plan out the facility. I can uh, uh, do a an assessment of the competition in the area. Figure out if 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 it makes sense to even build one there at all. Sometimes that's a big no. Okay, so uh, there could be um, real estate agents around who have an, a client who's thinking about selling their property and maybe uh, there's a real upside if it's converted into uh, storage given its uh, uh, exciting market. So Patrick Egan, the Sultan of Store, he's your guy. Be sure to give him a call. We've got his phone number up there. Let's see, which number are we giving I'll out? I'll give the, the uh, cell phone number, 416-400-2800. There it is, 400, 2800. That's a good number. And it's patrick.egan at colliers.com. And we've got, uh, uh, of course, you can be found on the Colliers website. But you are the specialist. You're also a broker. And you've been doing this for a long time. And you've been doing a lot of work with Storage Mart. How many locations do they have? Well, they, uh, they came in and they bought 53 locations. Uh, uh, 53 in, locations in, in, Canada? in Canada? And in yes. the U.S.? In the, Can in the U.S., they have approximately 70 at this point in time. 70. Okay, so they're very big in Canada. Yeah. They, they see an opportunity here. Absolutely. Because uh, I understand that um, there's a lot 
well, I guess uh, per capita, there's still a lot more storage units in the U.S., so Canada should have room to grow. Is that right? Absolutely. Um, as it the, the U.S. basically has about 11 square feet per capita of self-storage. In Canada, we're around four or five uh, square feet per capita. So there's, you know, there's upside. Mind you, down in the U.S., they don't have a lot of basements in southern, in the southern U.S., I ironically. See. So, um, you know, there, there's a bit of a trade-off. So I think probably if we settle in around seven, seven square foot per capita, we'd be, we'd be well, well suited in, in, in Canada. So I think there are opportunities out there right now. So there are opportunities, and Patrick, the Sultan of Store, he's your guy. Give him a call. That is all we have for today. So thank you very much for watching Keeping It Real here on All Talk TV. If you want to be on the show, give me a call. I'd like to hear from you. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next week, Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a great week. Thanks very much, Patrick. Thank you. Yeah.